So what would I want Viagra for, Steve? I'm a fully functional man. Two plus two is four, minus one, that's three quick maths. How are we doing, everybody? I am Kev Ashford, and this is the not world famous. Oh, hoo, 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 in a bit. Yes, what a week. Like I said, I'm Kev Ashford, this is Van Cam. If you've not seen it before, where have you been? We're going to be having a quick look back at the two games that have taken place since the last fan cam. There'll be the usual Fellaini watch and Disco Dave is back this week having a look at the latest transfer bollocks to do with Manchester United. Few players been linked, few going out. We'll cover it all in today's show. But first of all, we played Brighton at the weekend. Total meltdown after it. United fans coming out of the ground, you know. It's shit, the football shit. We won. We won one nil against a team who come and set up for a point. That's all he did. And I tell you what, I'm not even going to get into the game that much. You can say it was a lucky deflection, whatever. You make your own luck in this game. And the Brighton fans, I'm not even going to... Oh, don't get me started. They were really getting on me tits all game. And this is a team that come to Old Trafford in the 60th minute. Not the 80th, the 89th minute. The 60th minute. With 30 minutes of a game left, we're time wasting. So that tells you everything you need to know. These games can be difficult and everyone looks across at City, you know, they're scoring sevens and fives and 20 goals a game, whatever. Let's just focus on our own thing and get it in perspective that United are second and with the points that we've got now in past seasons, it would have been good enough to be top. But City are playing exceptional and it kills me to say it through gritted teeth. But, like I say, the Brighton fans, oh, I hate these fans that come to Old Trafford. They've got bugger all else to sing about, apart from United's atmosphere. We know the atmosphere is shit, so don't start coming and thinking, bit of football banter, you know. Mourinho's right, your fans are shite, right? Brilliant, that one, you know. 50,000 rabbits, and then when United fans do sing, we forgot that you were here, you know, we support our local team. What you support is a load of shite. Brighton fans, fair play. You really got on me tits last Saturday, and you can clearly see that I'm annoyed. Moving on, Watford, yeah? So we go from a boring 1-0, typical Mourinho, boring, boring United, and we stick four past a very good Watford team who have been in form, and in fact, it should have been a hell of a lot more. 3-0 up at half-time, we let them back into the game by sitting back, they get two sort of late goals, and then Jesse Lingard, fantastic run. I mean, Lingard won't get the plaudits he should. If this was Lionel Messi or something, it would be literally the greatest goal of all time, Maradona-esque. Fair play, Lingard, because I'm not a massive fan of yours. Uh, I know all the, all this shit, you know, he's a local lad. He's from Warrington. He come up through the youth team. I like that. I, I love that about him. But I just think at his age now, he should be really stamping down a place in that team. And he's definitely not a starter at the minute. Plus is Martial has been great in the last two games. He looks back to form. He's still not cracking a smile. Uh, he gets his goal against Watford. And the press is all about Lukaku, isn't it? Lukaku, Baron, you know, Baron run, the goal droughts on. Who gives a shit? As long as we're winning, Lukaku's part of that team. It's a team game. It's not about individuals. As long as he contributes, Kev is happy. And the other thing, Ashley Young, absolutely don't know what that is, sensational, absolutely sensational, you should let these players' contracts run down more often, because bloody hell, they don't start putting in shifts, do they, when they're trying to earn a new contract, but free kick against Watford, the first goal even, absolute quality, one of United's players of the season so far, and again, the media wank over Guardiola and City style of playing that, fair enough, Oh, look at what he's done with Fabian Delph, eh? He's made him into a left-back or whatever. Well, what about Mourinho? We've actually young. Can he not take some credit for that? Thought not. Typical ABUs. That is the rant over. Let's slide straight into Fellaini watch. McTominay has it for United. Looking for Fellaini. 
Oh, what's he doing? Yes, Keith. Yes, this is Fellaini Watch. And what an absolute corker. If you've seen last week's show, I touched base and revealed, well, what the papers were saying, but that Fellaini is basically leaving on a free transfer. Or he could leave on a free transfer. This week's news is an absolute corker. So imagine the scene. I'm sat at my table having my breakfast, phone in hand, scanning football, Man United related news, bite of my toast. <laughs> Marouane Fellaini linked with PSG. <laughs> yeah. Unbelievable. Apparently, PSG want to take the big man. They want his silky skills. Now imagine this. Fellaini rocks up on a free transfer. Neymar, all the boys, Thiago, you know. Oh, it's my birthday, lads. You know, Neymar's a nice one, the clown. No, I am not a clown. I am Marouane Fellaini. Yeah. Yes, sunshine. I have never heard such bollocks in all my life. And honestly, if Marouane, hairy-headed hound dog, bushy-haired bastard face, turns up at PSG on a free transfer, I will drink a pint of my own piss and hit myself in the face with a claw hammer. That's Fellaini Watch. That was Fellaini Watch. Uh, let me know what you think of that. Is that the best crack you've ever heard? Fellaini to PSG. <laughs> yeah, anyway, next up we're going to hear what the main man, Disco Dave, has to say. He's got more contacts than an optician's. Yeah, anyway, Disco's a mate of mine. He knows all the shit with the transfer stuff. So he's going to look into, uh, uh, t you know, players that United have been linked with over the last week. Cast these expert dodgy eye over it and I'll have a comment after it and we'll, we'll see. We'll just to, uh, take it from there. Hey up everybody, Disco Dave here. Manchester United are said to be interested in taking Arsenal pair Matthew Ozzel and Adam Sanchez, the players can leave on a free next summer and Jose Mourinho is said to be interested. Now my sources are saying that United are definitely interested in Sanchez, but it remains to be seen whether Mourinho would take a chance on Ozil, basically because he never turns up in the big games. I'll keep you posted. Big up to Disco Dave, nice one for that mate. Always gets us the exclusives here on the old Van Camp. Ozil, uh, Sanchez, I would definitely take Sanchez. And for the pure reason, he's proven in the Premier League. I put him down as world class. I reckon he, he gives 110% or he would for United. Bit of a Carlos Tevez kind of player. I used to love him before he became a total twat and went to City. Let me know what you think. Would you take Sanchez and Ozil? Maybe it's a no-brainer, you know, you take him for free. But I do think if you look at Mourinho when he managed Real Madrid, he used to take Ozil off all the time. He very rarely finished the game. He did about an hour or so, but maybe he did the damage in that time. I don't know. Maybe he thinks, you know, I can get the best out of him. Uh, we will see. Anyway, that was transfer bollocks. Next, we're going to move in to a bit... It's going to get me really going. It's called w -w 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 Wanker of the Week. As always on Van Cam, we do do Wanker of the Week. This week, my friends, it's no exception. But the difference this week and for a first on Van Cam, we have a joint first winner. Now, number two, we're going to do two to one. Yeah. Number two is David Moyes. I know what you're thinking, this guy could be it every week, probably should be, but he's taken over at West Ham and already the excuses have started. You know where I'm going with this. Obviously, if you're a United fan watching, you're well aware of what that ginger hair goggle eye bastard was exactly like. He basically makes excuses, says he aspires to be like Man City and after getting thumped 4-0 by Everton, who have been totally dog shit this season. Uh, Wayne Rooney scoring a hat-trick even, just to rub it in. Uh, Davy Moyes 
comes out and says that they played well. They just made a few mistakes. Well, they made more than a few, mate. They made four, if that if that's what you're going off. And they were thumped 4-0. Uh, it's great to have David Moyes back, I must say. Uh, it reminds me kind of a dark time, but I'm just glad we got through it. Coming in at number one, and it's a joint number one, but it's to do with the same thing. It's to do with that, that bald-headed, I invented football, Pep Guardiola. Who comes in at joint first is Jim White. Yeah, oh, that bell end there. You, you know him from transfer deadline day. Oh, why is he joint number one? Well, after City's recent win over Southampton where they scored in the 134th minute or whatever it was, Pep Guardiola takes to the field uh, to an opposition player, Redmond, and decides a bit of handballing, grabs him round the neck. Now, apparently what he actually said was, you're better than that, you don't have to play like that. What is that got to do with you? Guardiola, you bald-headed fuckface, yeah? What has it got to do with you? He's not your player. Go and embrace your own players. You know, tell Aguero that he looks like a twat. Do whatever you want. I don't know. I'm not arsed. It's Man City. I'm not arsed, right? But Jim White on his show, Talk Sport, decided to defend Guardiola and actually claim that this was a show of passion. Right. Okay, so running on the pitch, an opposition player grabbing him round the neck and mithering him and dogging him and saying that you shouldn't have played like that, you were shit. Is that all right? Oh, well, let's fast forward a little bit. Let's not, let's rewind. Can I get a rewind? If we go back, Jose Mourinho. Now picture this, if Jose Mourinho would have done this exact same thing, what would we be looking at? I'm thinking four years in prison, a 20 touchline ban. Yeah, yeah, 20 year ban. That's what we're talking about, because when Mourinho kicks a water bottle on the side of the pitch, in frustration, you know, it's petulant, it's anger. Mourinho has lost the plot. Pep Guardiola has literally just lost the plot after winning a game, and he's handballing an opposition player. But if Mourinho had done this, I'm telling you, the FA would have thrown the book at him. But Guardiola gets away with it, because it's passion, just like Jurgen Klopp does. You know, he's kicking every ball on the sideline. That was a head. You know, he's heading every ball. But when Mourinho does it, it's one rule for one and a different one for all them other shower wankers. And you are not immune from that. Antonio Conte, Jurgen Klopp, even Arsene Wenger, they can all manhandle, headbutt. You know what? Fourth officials, when it comes to Mourinho, the book is thrown at him. This week's wanker of the week is well-deserved Pep Guardiola, the man who invented the game of football and how it should be played. And that Scottish prick, Jim White, off Sky Sports. It's deadline D. That is it. Wanker of the week. Says take off your jacket. Says beads. Man's not hot. You get me fam. Yeah, that was Wanker of the Week. Again, get your comments flowing in the section down here. Make sure you drop a like on it. You get me, yeah? Next up, your comments. Gonna try and fly through these because I'm sure it takes up too much time on a weekly basis, but thanks to everyone who gets involved in the comments. Uh, the only way you can have a comment read out is by leaving one. You get me, yeah. Uh, Man United 96 said, Fellaini, now linked with PSG, and a shitload of laughing emojis. <laughs> I know, it is the funniest piece of shit transfer news. I've heard in a long time. Now, my mate, the Withenshaw Raver, Dave Conreen, said, cheers for the shout out, Kev. Top show, as always. Uh, quick question, sir. Do you prefer the new United badge or the classic 80s, 90s badge that had football club on it? Now, that's exactly what I was going to get at, Sunshine. You cannot beat that badge. And the day that, that that crest changed and they took them two words, football and club, off the badge, United become a brand, you know, Manchester United, that was registered, the name, and it does make you feel a bit detached from Manchester United, that, the fact, why can't they put it back on, you know, make us happy, and um, half the time, half the shit that United do, all this sponsorship and all the shenanigans that go on, put football club back on the badge, what's wrong with that, because ultimately, and at the start of it, when we were new to Neath, 
that's what United were. They still are a football club, but you know what I mean. United trying to make it the brand and all that. His second question was, uh, I'm an Xbox master. Uh, am I Xbox or PlayStation? Xbox me. You can search me, Kevin Ashford 7. Always on the old FIFA. Shit out like that. It's all right, I see. And said, why do you look like Carrick sometimes? Do I? That's a new one. The Unknown Genius said, ha ha ha, that small in impression though. This was because last week's video, I decided that the world was ready for the Chris Smalling impression. He always says the word chances, but he says it a bit, you know, feminine. Uh, he says chances. He goes, we had a few many chances today. There you go again. You've got it. You can have it. Uh, Nathan Noon said, Kev, do you think we should try Zlat and Lukaku up front together? I was thinking about this a while ago, but the way that Zlatan is now, and last season he scored a shitload of goals, but I do think he's going to be more effective in a number 10 role behind a striker. Be interesting to see two of them up front, but I think Zlatan's ego is too big, and I think Lukaku, Lukaku, Lukaku is scared shitless of him. And I think even when he's on the pitch, I think he, he has that effect on Lukaku sometimes where he thinks, you know, I'm not the main man, you know, Zlatan is and all that shit. Uh, Mez, Mezrino on the old Twitter said, this is who the World Wide Web thinks you look like. And it is Arvind Swamy. Who is this bellend? You cheeky bastard. That's a frightening thought, man. I didn't know who it was, so I looked him up. And Arvind Swamy is an Indian film actor. Oh, yeah. He's an actor and a model and an entrepreneur and a television presenter. So I suppose we have got something in common, me and Ar Arvind, haven't we? I've done a bit of modelling in the past. Granted, you know, the shot of me, they cut my head out. It was the arms, do you know what I mean? The guns, that's the, what they wanted in. I'm an arm model. That's what I am. Martin Olschlund said, If Kev was a woman, I would do you. All right, Tiger. He didn't say that. And then said, oh, wait, maybe not. fuck is this man this is a lady of the night i'm pretty sure i've never been with one i don't know just mates have told me about it and this is a scary mofo so oshlan whatever your name is you are a cheeky bastard you are sunshine you're the cheeky the cheekiest bastard of the week Thank you very much for all getting involved. It all starts again now with this video, so make sure you get the comments in. Like the video. It's an appreciation. There's some blinding in here, man. It's an appreciation of the video and all the hard work that Kev goes into on a weekly basis, trying to troll through all these messages and putting shit together, which makes up the Van Cam show. Uh, you can get in touch to all the usual shit. The Facebook page, make sure you like that. It's at... Kev's Van Cam, email address kevinashford7 at gmail.com. Google Plus, Kevin Ashford, get on that as well. Twitter and all that should be up here. You might not even be able to see me hand because there's like a big ball of sun that's creeping in. It could be God. Where are you, my friend? God is on Van Cam. It's creeping in. Scary shit here. Uh, and oh, if you like podcasts, like I do, get on the United Stand one. Uh, Joy and Paul, he's always got different guests on and all that. I think it's Ash and a few of the lads. If you like listening to that like I do, cruising about, you know, laid back, listening to tunes and the podcast, obviously. You can get on that. There'll be a link in the description. So get in there and check it out. Now, we are playing at the weekend. Arsenal, it's time for Team Talk. Is that you, God? I'm in the zone. This weekend, Manchester United take on Arsene Wenger's Arsenal team at the Emirates Stadium. It's time for United, the Red Army, to rock up. We'll remind them that we won the championship. 20 times, motherfuckers. 20 times, that's what I'm talking about. Let's get there. Let's tell them that Matt Busby 
laid the foundations for this football team and the way that United play football. Please do not be defensive. Fellaini, boots off sunshine, you've not made the squad. Get cleaning the toilets as usual. But for the rest of the team, we're going free at the back again. Lindelof, get in there with them challenges. Bring Sanchez down, but don't injure him because we want to sign him in the summer. Into the midfield, Matic, you okay? Yeah, you keep it steady in the middle. Keep feeding the ball to Pogba and Martial. Yes, consistency at last. Keep running at them. Lukaku, keep that chin up, sunshine. The chances will come. And once that ball goes in the net, which I think it will this weekend, you'll never look back and you'll continue to score the goals that will get United to the summit of the Premier League. There's only one reason we need to win this is because we need three points. But ultimately, we get to watch Arsenal fan TV all night, drinking beer and laughing at these wankers of a meltdown. And for the fact that Piers Morgan supports Arsenal and he's an absolute twat face. So for United at the weekend, half five on Saturday. Come on! United! Are you ready? Are you ready for love? Yes, I am. Oh.